Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to uh, an episode of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm phoning it in, guys. Uh, I'm working from home. Lockdown did not get shortened. Uh, Dan Andrews, the good graces he had to uh, let us to, to end the curfew. Great. So now if it's like four in the morning and I want to go nowhere... Uh, within five kilometres, I can. Thank you, Dan. No, I, I think he's doing a good job. I think, you know what? I don't think there is such a thing as a good job uh, in this scenario. I don't think you can please everyone. I don't think you can nail this shit. Uh, and I don't think he's done an amazing job, but I think that he's done a better job than most other people would have, given the circumstances. Um... I do love how everyone's like, man, it's Daniel's fault. They were fucking in quarantine. Look, they shouldn't have got private security to do the hotel quarantine. But I, but also, I read a story about how the army fucking came in and they did a quarantine and they caught one of the soldiers fucking in the hotel room. So let's be honest. It doesn't matter who is running the security? Apparently, if you're an Australian and you're in a quarantine and you're keeping people in there, there's a very high high chance that you know you're going to end up fucking one of the prisoners. So, look, maybe that's just just what it is. Okay, no, I don't want to get on this fucking shit. I've uh, I've been having a good week, uh, and because uh, I'm working from home, obviously, like a lot of you guys that are working from home, I'm phoning it in. The dress code's out. I'm in fucking pajama pants. It is 4 p.m. I been in pajama pants uh i've had i had my fucking little burnout moment i took three days off and i'm feeling great because when you work from home you can do that shit and a day off for me is like oh i'll just film shit i can never i swear to god i can never have an entire day off where i do nothing otherwise i start to feel more stressed i'm like i need to do something i have to do something i tried to have a couple of days off uh and i managed to get i managed to get like three 60 percent day off you know that you know one of those where you're like oh I'll, I'll relax and then you spend fucking 40 percent of the day doing emails one of those fucking days but i'm feeling good i uh i, I just finished watching the uh, the ufc i've never watched uh, a pay-per-view on the ufc i paid 55 dollars uh on the fucking ufc app that's so much that's so much money 55 dollars pay-per-view Cunts were bitching about five bucks to see my comedy special. Hey, times that by 11, you got the UFC and they still play ads. Are you kidding? 55 fucking dollars and they're still going, this knockout is sponsored by cum or whatever the fuck they were advertising. The UFC fucking video game. I don't want to play that shit. $55 for a digital fucking 40 minute fight. Cut the ads. I couldn't believe it. I'd never done a pay-per-view before in my life. I couldn't believe that I paid 55 fucking dollars and I'm sitting there catching ads. I don't mind like ads on, on the ring or like on shit, but they were literally like in the middle of the fight. The cunts are fighting. They are grappling with... I wouldn't even mind ads in between rounds, but literally I'm watching the fucking preliminary fights... They are fighting, and the announcer, instead of going, oh, Damo fucking clocked one, clocked that guy in the head, they're literally going, oi, you guys should watch the boys on Amazon Prime, cunt, shut the fuck up, there is a, they're fighting, could you imagine, there's no audience in the fucking fights right now, because of coronavirus, Right, so they're fighting in silence. I bet those fucking fighters can hear the fucking announcers while they're fighting for their lives. These are like new fighters, the early rounds. They're just trying to make a career out of fighting. They're literally fighting for their life, right? They're like, if I lose this fight, I'm going back home and I'm never going to fucking make it. And imagine trying to like clinch someone or trying to get the perfect knockout. You're, you're trying to escape from a fucking headlock and you're thinking, man, this is going to look good on the cameras. I reckon I'm going to get a fucking sponsorship out of this. And then some cunt, after you've just knocked your opponent's teeth out, goes, wow, wasn't that good? But you know what's even better than that? Damo's hair gel. You can get some at fucking damoshair.com. Shut up. I paid $55. I want to see some blood, not some fucking ads. 
I couldn't believe that shit. I know that a lot of like UFC fans must be like, I can't, I can't believe that he didn't know this happened. We've been dealing with this for years. You shouldn't be. Fifty-five fucking dollars. I gotta catch an ad. Imagine if you bought my comedy special and then halfway through, I was like, "Hey guys, don't forget to watch the boys on Amazon Prime." All right, here we go. Anyway, so I was down the shops the other day. That would be so fucking infuriating. I can't believe they do that shit. When do they like? Why? Why can't I? Would honestly pay ten bucks more for none of that. Why can't we do that? Why is that never an option to just pay a little bit more and you get no ads? They have that on Twitch. I love that. You fucking, you sub to somebody, so if you subscribe to me, you'll never see an ad on my channel. I fucking love that. Why can't we do that in other things? Like on YouTube, why can't you sub or give me fucking two bucks and you don't see an ad? Oh, actually, you can do that. YouTube Premium. I do that. I haven't seen an ad yeah, I do that. I haven't seen an ad on YouTube for fucking literally years. It's awesome. Dude, if there's one subscription service that's actually worth it, it actually is YouTube Premium. If you watch a lot of that shit, I mean, I think I even get more money from your view. So more money from your views goes to the people you watch and you don't see an ad ever again. It's fucking awesome. That being said, I still make fuck all money on YouTube, but you won't see any more ads other than the ones that I do. I'd be so on board with that. It's just paying fucking a little bit of money and I just get no ads. That's what I really want. And I don't I don't do ad blocker because that would be hypocritical of me trying to create a living online to also be using ad blocker. So I can't do that shit. I don't know. It just pissed me off that I paid $55. Fair enough, it's on YouTube. That's free. That doesn't annoy me as much. And there's an option to get rid of them entirely. But you pay 55 fucking dollars for something and you got to sit through... I watched, like, all of the fights. Like, four hours of fights. I, I saw an ad for the fucking UFC video game about 30 times. Shut up. $55. <laughs> but the fights, man, were so good. Dude, that Izzy guy is no joke. I'd watched, like, a li like fights of his, like, online after the fact... Highlights, all that kind of bullshit. I loved his personality. I love how he's a big nerd. I related to him a lot. Dude, they showed him in his promo trailer when they were showing like his journey and how much of a how much he wanted the win. It started off in a comic book shop. I don't think I've ever related to anything more in my life, right? Is just being like, man, I'm gonna be the greatest in the world. But first, I need to buy three copies of Suicide Squad because I like the art. <laughs> That's so sick. I lo it's good to see a nerd get some representation in, in this shit. You know, finally, a nerd who could beat the fuck out of you. So good. He's incredible, man. He trashed that other guy. And that other guy was good. I watched a few of his, his other fights before the, the main fight. He's fucking good. Although it made me very angry. My girlfriend kept saying, why the, the Brazilian dude, I think he's Brazilian, she kept going, oh, why, why is he fighting? He's too handsome to be fighting. He should be like a model or an actor or something. Shut up! Stop talking about how fucking hot he is, right? Because I can't even be like, yeah, but I could beat him in a fight. He'd kill me. Yeah, but I'm more successful. He's a millionaire. So it was, it was very good for me to see Izzy beat the fuck out of him for me. You know what I mean? Because that's not, that's not what, what you want, is when you see the most terrifying man in the world who could beat you in a fight with his fucking eyes closed, and then your girlfriend goes, he's really fucking handsome and won't shut up about it. <laughs> so it was so... I, so thank you very much, Izzy. Well done. Okay? That shut her up. I think I'm going to be... Yet another comedian obsessed with the UFC. Sorry. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Because because here's the thing. I know that I have a huge portion of people who listen to this fucking hate all kinds of sport, UFC included, right? So if I start talking about UFC all the time, that's going to piss them off. But also, there's probably a big portion of you guys that love the UFC. And if I talk about it, my lack of knowledge and general understanding is going to piss you off. So I lose both ways here. So let's talk about something that I think can bring the nerds and the meatheads together, right? 
I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Warzone. And, dude, I'm getting good. I, I progress past the part... I think every Battle Royale, doesn't matter what it is, Fortnite, uh, fucking PUBG, Warzone... Uh, what's the what's the one at the moment? Fucking um, I was watching B play it the other day. Valorant, I think. No, that's not it. The other one, Apex Legends. That's the other one, right? I, I played that a little bit. I liked it. I've played like I've never played Fallout, but I played on oh, never Fallout, Fortnite, but I've played PUBG. I played fucking uh, Apex. I played Warzone, uh, and I played one other one, right? And I think that they all have something in common. Every single one of these fucking games is, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how good you are at video games in general, no matter who the fuck you are, the minute you start a new Battle Royale game, you fucking hate it, and it sucks, and it's terrible, and it's not even fun for like a little bit. It just makes you mad for like weeks. It makes you angry. You start yelling, this is fucking bullshit. You start going, I hit him first. How did I fucking hit him? This is bullshit. This game sucks. It's rigged. I'm never playing it again. You shut it off. 20 minutes later, what are you doing? You're dropping in again. Doesn't matter who the fuck you are, how good you are. The minute you try a new fucking Battle Royale game, it sucks. It's bad. It's bullshit. You're mad, but you keep coming back and then something happens and guys i think yesterday i hit this point right you either give up and you go this game's fucking bullshit and you go back to your old one i did that a couple weeks ago kept getting fucking killed kept getting angry kept having my teammates go come on dude what are you doing i don't know there's no tutorial quit the game for weeks Fuck this game. It sucks. I do not like it. A few weeks later, came back. Hey, I hit that second level. I start getting good. Right? I start getting real fucking good. I came sixth last night. Six, not first. But that's fucking good. Six. In quads, not bad. Right? I start... Placing minimum 20th, right? 20 and up. All my last placements, except for a couple of bullshit ones where my teammates were drooling, right? And I start to hit this level, right? And I think everyone hits this level after they quit and then they come back. They either quit for good or you quit for a little bit and you come back and something switches in your brain. And this is where the game goes from this game is fucking bullshit to... My teammates are fucking retarded. What are they doing, right? And I'm at that point where I'm good, but none of the fucking people I'm playing with are me, right? So now I'm at this fucking middle point where I'm good, my teammates are dumb as fuck, I can't win, and even though I've gotten so much better, right? Previously I thought, oh, this game's fucking bullshit. It's, it's gonna be good when I get good at it. Guys, I'm good at it. It still fucking sucks. I'm, it's not, I'm still not having fun. I'm still angry. It's just in a different direction. I think that's what happens. You ne I think that there is, there's a big myth about this Battle Royale games. I don't think you can have fun. I think you just keep transferring your anger in a different direction. It's like gambling, dude. You lose, but that fucking jackpot's just hanging right in front of you going, oh, the next one, I'll get it. The next one, I'll get it. Next thing you know, you've got no fucking kids. Your wife has left you. Your house is being repossessed. And everyone's going, all you do is stare at that fucking screen and lose. And then you're just there lonely and angry. And that's where I'm at. Except instead of, you know, being angry at me for wasting all of my money, I'm angry at my teammates for wasting my time. That'd be like if I went to Crown and I lost the game, so I started punching the cunt next to me. Just some elderly Chinese woman who believes in luck because her culture's a little bit fucked. Bitch, this is your fault! She's screaming. <laughs> I've been here for three days! I don't know what's happening! <clears throat> So I've re so I think that 
I'm go I think that the only way to enjoy that shit is to play with friends you actually know. I played one round, a couple rounds with Luke uh, and uh, and Devlin and Keelan, and and that was fun. But I was the only one who knew what was happening, and they were all playing on console. So I would be like, "He's over there," and I'd start shooting, and then 40 minutes later, these cunts would turn their fucking joysticks around, dude. Console players, right, have got to be the most handicapped cunts ever, right? Cross-platform play is, at the same time, the most amazing thing ever and the most backwards fucking dumb decision ever, right? And it's only dumb and it only hurts one type of player. That's the PC player, right? Because on one hand... If I know that the other, the enemy has is playing on a console, they're fucking over, right? But if I am stuck, and this has been every single one of my games, every single game I play, it's three cunts on a PS4, me on a PC, I carry the whole team, it takes them 35 minutes to turn around, and, and it's over. And then I'm just by myself, right? It, you know what it's like? You know what cross-platform play is? is like it's like if they took the olympics all these olympic athletes are killing it right you got usain bolt breaking world records you got ian thorpe fucking smashing it in the pool those are the only sportsmen in the olympics that i can remember i don't watch that shit but the analogy is fire trust me it's like they saw the Olympics and they were like, fuck, you know how good the Olympics would be if there were more people in it? And theoretically, that sounds like a good idea. On paper, that sounds like a good idea, right? But there are only two types of Olympians, right? There's the Olympics. That's me. That's the PC players. The PC. PC players are in the Olympics and everyone is looking at the games and going, bro, those games look fun. How good, how much better would those games be if everyone could play them together, right? They're looking at the Olympic athletes trashing everyone else, having a great time with each other. It's amazing for the sports fans to watch it. And they were like, you know what, what would be great if we could do that too, right? It's like... Cross-platform play is like getting the Olympics and combining it with the Special Olympics. It's like, yeah, the events are the same. The rules are the same. There's still all of the regular Olympians competing in the events. And more people can compete in the Olympics. But unfortunately... For me, on my team, there's a bunch of retards. And they can't keep up with me. <laughs> and it's costing me the fucking medal. Yeah, sure, more people can play. I'm sure they're having fun. I'm not. I keep losing and it's because of these cunts wearing helmets. They're slow. I don't, I love them. I can't hate on them, right? Because of course they want to play with me. I'm the best. I'm, I'm an Olympic athlete. Of course they're inspired by my skill, but fuck, they are slow. <laughs> and that's cross-platform play. More people can play, but it doesn't mean it's a good experience for the Olympic athletes to combine it with the Special Olympics. And if you're mad at that, I guess you have an Xbox. And that's your problem. Not mine. That's on you. Woo! I should have saved that for the Patreon episode, that one. 
Speaking of, man, I uh, I had a look at the Patreon. Dude, it is growing so much. Thank you so much to everyone. Uh, I, th- I was really, really surprised, and I'm still surprised. Every single day, there's more signups, more signups. It's amazing. So more people are joining the Discord. More people are getting access to the Patreon-only podcast that drops once a week. Uh, it's uh, it's an extra bit of uh, Spearhead Sundays delivered straight to your ears, and, uh, you know, because it's not on any platform, I get a little bit more fucking problematic. So if you want more Spearhead Sundays, if you want to support what I do, uh, if you want to keep uh, me relying less on ads, uh, then, you know, Patreon's the way to do it. And uh, we're building up a great little community here. It's uh, it's really, really cool. The Discord is fucking banging. Everyone's making friends with each other. It's... Uh it's really, really cool to see playing video games with each other, and uh, and I'm in there all the time as well. So uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Come join the Discord, support the show, and uh, you get more Spearhead Sundays. It's really, really fucking good. All right. Now, what else did I want to talk about here? Uh, let me see. What do I have written down? I've got my notes here. Hmm. Um. Okay. You know what? Speaking of ads, okay. I, I wanted to talk about this. So the Logitech thing is now public. I talked about this. I kind of alluded to it in, in the Patreon podcast, if you heard that. Um, but I couldn't, like, confirm it because, you know, non-disclosure agreements. The uh, the Logitech deal is revealed. Uh, and uh, it's been going great. So, man, thank you so much to everyone who's, like, been liking the posts and commenting on it because, the, you know, that's fucking important because I have to send them uh, analytics of every fucking post I do about it. There's two more that I need to do just on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Insta. And then I have to do, like, one little 60 second mid roll in a main channel video so you guys liking those posts you guys commenting on them that's really really important and i fucking love to see it i think finally the days of uh are starting to be over of people getting angry when they see you get endorsement deals it's like dude i i got so fucking angry at this one this one comment this one guy goes on facebook because of course it's facebook right the dumbest cunts on the universe are commenting negative things on Facebook. If Have you ever seen a negative comment on Facebook and gone, you know what, I agree. You always go, that guy's literally insane. Put that cunt in the Special Olympics because he looks strong, but fuck, he's dumb. <laughs> That's always what I think. Whenever I see it, I don't even know why I look at it anymore. I don't even open the fucking app, right? So I post the Logitech thing, and can I just say, Logitech have been fucking amazing. They nailed that edit. I was surprised. I didn't get to approve the edit. You know they put clips? I was surprised, dude. It's fucking Logitech. It's a big company. They put clips. Whoever edited that is a fucking mad cunt, by the way. If you go and watch some of the clips... They've included footage from the Marxism video. They even put in a little clip from the Dreamworld joke. They went all in. They're standing by me. That's fucking sick. I thought that they'd be a little bit careful and cautious, which is, you know, fair enough. It's fucking, it's like a global corporation. I thought they tiptoe. They didn't fuck around. They chose me and they backed me and that's fucking awesome to see, right? And they haven't given me any rules nothing they just said yeah you have to post four times that's it Uh, keep doing what you're doing amazing right the only fucking deal i would ever take is the no rules deal of like you want to sponsor me you get me you don't get fucking sanitized lewis you get me i'm not changing my behavior anywhere else i won't swear in your ad that's it right so they did that amazing nailed it and they've been cool so which is awesome and you guys know that i don't Fuck, I'm not going to fucking censor myself for cash, you know? You'll come. I'm, I'm building this with you guys. That's why the Patreon's so important. That's why I'm starting Twitch. That's why I do everything on every fucking platform because I will not be controlled. I'm not going to be censored because this platform doesn't like it. No worries. I got five others. I'm not going to be fucking uh, not doing this or not saying, saying cunt because you don't, because you, you're, you're not going to sponsor me if you do. Cool. I'll find someone else who does. And hey, Logitech, they stepped up. They backed me. Awesome, right? I get this one comment that fucking infuriated me. Dumbest cunt alive. You guys know me. I don't get mad at you suck. I don't get mad at, oh, you're bad. That's fine. That's an opinion. That's all good. There's other comedians out there for you. Uh, Maybe you like weird zany shit that says nothing, okay? Maybe that's for you. Uh, Maybe you're boring, okay? That's all good. That's an opinion. Nothing wrong with an opinion. I get mad at the dumb 
wrong and confident cunts. That shit pisses me off to no avail. I don't know why. It's just the aggressively, confidently wrong, right? And I don't know why that pisses me off because often that's me. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why I get angry at it because it's like unstoppable force meets a movable object. You're fucking wrong and confident, dude. That's like literally spearhead Sundays, isn't it? Like, let's be fucking, uh, let's be real here. Let's have a little bit of self-awareness. Me getting angry at people who are confidently wrong and dumb is just like me having a punch on with the mirror. It's fucking the show. Hey guys, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. I haven't researched any of this. Here's what I think. Confidently wrong, kind of dumb. But hey, at least I'm not telling you you should think what I think. I'm at least honest right? I think that's the difference, right? I'm, I'm like confidently wrong, but it's, it's ultimately for comedy. That's kind of the vibe. I think it's funnier. If I know the facts, I just say the facts. You know what I mean? If I just fucking, if I research all this stuff, I'm just going to end up doing a lecture and you guys aren't here for that. I'm here for comedy. And for whatever reason, my comedy seems to work better when I know about 70% of the story because then the other 30%, hey, that's, that's, that's free time for me. I can make the rest up. Let's go. Right? So this dumb cunt, I post the first Logitech video and he got ethered in the comments, which by the way, love to see. Love that from you guys. I've been thoroughly enjoying seeing whenever I do like a sponsored thing, if one person comments something negative, 10 cunts say, shut the fuck up. You're a bag blocker. We love to see it. Ever since that raid deal. Ever since, ever since I went off against bag blockers, every time I do a sponsored thing, if there's, and there's rarely any negative shit, but if there's one, I can guarantee you there's seven replies. <laughs> and that's great, right? So this guy goes, um, he said something along the lines of, maybe I can pull it up here. Let me see if it, he may have deleted it. I'll see if I can pull it up because I want it because I really want to read it like word for word so you can fucking seethe with me. Um... Where are we? Uh, go on my page. Da, da, da. Definitely should have got this up uh, beforehand. Where are we? Dude, how bad is Saturday Night Live? Every time I see a, one of their clips in my feed, I just go, fuck, when is that going to end? Worse than COVID. All right. Okay, here it is. Uh, I'm just loading up the comments. Dude, as soon as I saw that fucking... The, the one thing I'm not happy about that Logitech shot is they keep using this awful awful angle of me that really highlights how desperately I need a f new chin. But but that's fine because I know that once I get that bad boy it's fucking over. Right? Now there's a few comments here I love. Oath. Chase the bag. Fucking legend. Get that bag. You're a king. Okay? Now here's one that I love. Okay? And the only reply I'll read the reply after. Alright. So this comment You're a sellout, Lewis. And then he puts in, in quotes, if the comedy's not good enough, find other means of income. He's obviously saying that I'm bad at comedy. That must be why I'm taking deals. And here's the, here is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. When you make a commercial, your name gets scratched off the artistic roll call for life. We're sorry to see your ship sail, buddy. I'm sorry. We? Who are you speaking for? Zero likes. Only reply, fuck off crumb, 20 likes. <laughs> Dude, that is so dumb for so many reasons. If you do a commercial, you're no longer an artist. Oh, I guess art isn't fucking real. I guess the only fucking artist that you would ever support is the cunt who's never made a living out of it. Is that like Vincent Van Gogh? That's it. That's the only fucking artist because he died before he became successful. I'm sorry. I guess, look, you know what? You're totally right. Uh, I guess the only reason why I'm doing deals is because my comedy's bad. I guess, you know what? I'm going to go back to making a living out of stand-up comedy. I guess I'll book a show. Oh, wait. They're fucking illegal. My bad. To impress you and the way you speak of who apparently seem to be fucking imaginary, I'm going to give a call to every single cunt who works with me and I'm going to say, Hey, uh, look. 
because there's no shows anymore and YouTube keeps getting demonetized, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm going to have to let you go. And they're going to go, oh, well, what about that Logitech deal? Oh, no, sorry. I want to impress James from fucking... <laughs> I'm not going to say the suburb. I could have. I almost did. But I'm not going to do that because I'm a good person. Sorry. No. I'm, I want to impress James from fuck off nowhere. So you're fired, bro. I'm sorry about that. But because, you know, COVID came along, I can't do any shows. I want to impress this one fucking dork who I can guarantee you has never bought a ticket to one of my fucking shows ever. I want to impress that cunt. So I'm going to have to turn down... A fucking deal that is organic as the grass we walk on. So, fuck you. You have no job and I have no job also. Goodbye. And then I go homeless. All the people who work for me lose any fucking income and we all fucking die. But that's okay because I've impressed this one dumb cunt on Facebook who would never come to a show anyway. End rant. So, in conclusion, if you ever see a cunt talking shit about a creator doing an organic brand deal. If if they're fucking lying, if they if it's a terrible fucking thing, whatever. That's different. If they genuinely have changed, but it, bro, if I'm calling cunts who comment underneath the ad cunts, I don't think anything's fucking changed. <laughs> it's like, dude, here's what happened. When I started my fucking shit, I used a Logitech webcam, and I used the old model of the Blue Yeti mic, right? And then I started to do well, and like it was fucking fated by the gods, Logitech came, they introduced a new version of their webcam and a better version of the mic that I used to create a career, and they were like, hey, will you say that these are good? And before they even fucking offered me money, I would have gone, yeah, they're good. I mean, I wouldn't have done it, of course, if they were offering. But if someone were to ask me, is this a good mic? I would have gone, yes, because it is. So literally nothing's changed other than them giving me a bit of cash to say so. I got to do four posts. If that makes you angry, fuck off forever. And to all of the people who've been liking and commenting lovely things and saying that it's cool to see and uh, and think that it's great, thank you so much because I think that's the coolest fucking shit ever. It's like it's like a fucking sportsman getting a fucking endorsement deal with the equipment they started with. Cool. So I think that's great, and uh, and thank you very much. And I got two more posts, and uh, and and let me tell you. It's good to see the army forming up for every time I post it. Because there's always one. And, and you know what? Here's, here's what I want. If there's one, I want to see ten. <laughs> if there's one negative comment, that's all good. But I want to see ten replies. <laughs> oh, fuck. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it was so funny that he wrote that fucking massive paragraph. And then there's just one comment that just says fuck off crumb and it's got 20 likes there wasn't even other people going yeah shut up there was just like he goes we're sorry to see you go and then everyone goes nah you're just a fucking dumb cunt i just i just cannot i as a fucking creator it is so hard to make money especially now you know so when if when it's it just fucking shits me that when people see other people just trying to make a living out of this shit. YouTube is so unreliable. That's literally the only platform that I actually make a bit of money out of that I create on. You know, Patreon's different cuz that's directly from you, but in terms of like a fucking company giving me giving me money, it's just YouTube. And Twitch has been added in now. But before, you know, when this Logitech was around, it was just YouTube. So it's like, okay, cunt, I'll just go back to that. I'll get rid of all of my fucking employees and you will never see me again because I won't be able to afford to make the shit that I do. Guess where that money that Logitech gave me went? Back into the fucking content, into the pockets of the people that create shit with me, building more to entertain more while changing nothing because I lost so much money touring that without that, it would have been all over. So if you're mad about that, 
literally suck me from the back and make eye contact with my rim. You can't. <laughs> Sniff the back of my nuts, you fucking dog. Uh, and the stream cam's a good camera. <coughs> Woo! All right, what are we doing here? I hope I don't get in trouble for that. No snitching. Um, where are we? Oh, that's right. I should talk a little bit about Twitch. I've been streaming. I've been really enjoying it, actually. Um, tomorrow night, if you're listening to this on Sunday, so Monday night, uh, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., uh, Melbourne time, Google it, cunt. Uh, I'm going to be playing Among Us with all the Luke and Lewis boys and a couple other people. It's going to be fucking great. We'll make a video out of it afterwards for uh, the channel. Oh, here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm thinking of turning. I've got my second channel, Lou2, that I've just had no idea what to do with for the longest time. I think I'm going to turn it into like a, a gaming Twitch highlights channel. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, that's what I'm thinking of doing because there's a lot of people that can't make the streams because of time zones or whatever, or they miss them because they do them twice a week when they're f for four hours each, so not many people are going to tune in for fucking eight hours of that a week, uh, which I understand. Uh, so I was thinking of doing like a highlights channel. Let me know what you think of that, uh, and if there's demand for it, I'll do it. Because uh, it's again, I gotta fucking you know hire somebody to to do the highlights. Because I don't have time to do that. I'm trying to make shit for you guys and write stand up and all that kind of bullshit. But if you guys want it, uh, I'll do it. So let me know, uh, and that's where your fucking Patreon money will go. Um, because yeah, I, if you guys want that shit, let me know. I'll do it. But um, dude, the the update on the blue hair situation, dude. I'm fucking dreading it. I'm honestly, I'm honestly dreading it. Now I'm not gonna complain because obviously there's there's a you know, it's great. And I love that people are supporting me on Twitch. And I love that people are subbing and getting behind me. But but for, but that that can be true and that can be good. But, but also this is true. I don't fucking want blue hair. And it's looking more and more likely. I've done three actual streams. I said a thousand subs like a dumb cunt, thinking that that would be impossible, okay? I thought that would be some outlandish goal. I thought I would get to like, I honestly thought 300 in a month, that's awesome, right? I have done three real streams and I'm sitting on 511 subs. I am more than half of the way there with literally more than three weeks of streaming to go. It's only been fucking three streams. <laughs> I am going to have blue hair. And uh, I can't remember if I talked about this last week, but uh, I've learned that you can't dye brown hair blue. I'm not doing the stuff that washes out. I'm a man of my word. If it gets there, I'm doing it for real. I, But I didn't know this also. I should have known this. Mum's a hairdresser. I thought that you could just go from brown to blue and then it would and then it would eventually after a few months wash out and then I'd go back to brown. Jasmine informed me that you can't go from brown to blue. You have to first bleach the brown white and then dye the white blue. So what's going to happen and and bleaching is not dying, right? that you bleach it and it changes the color of the hair inside and out. Dying, it changes the color on the outside and then it eventually washes out after a few months. Bleaching is bleaching, right? If you spill bleach on your carpet, it's white forever. It, it doesn't, you can't clean bleach out. Bleach is the clean. It removes color. It doesn't change. Blue changes. Bleach removes. So what's going to happen is I'm going to bleach my fucking hair and then I'm going to dye it blue. And then a few months after that, the blue is going to wash out, but I'm going to be left with half brown, half white hair. That is going to look fucking ridiculous. So if there's anything that you take away from this podcast, hey, don't sub to me on Twitch. If you want to support me, go through Patreon. One, you get an extra podcast once a week. Two, 100% of the money goes to me. Well, 95, whatever. Way more money than fucking Twitch. Three, you won't have to look at a fucking insane cunt with half brown, half white, and then blue tips. Because you know that's how I'm going to look. I'm going to look like a fucking Ben and Jerry's ice cream uh, screaming. 
I can't complain too much because it is fucking awesome. I'm really enjoying streaming. It's been very, very fun. It's, it feel, it's, like, it's obviously not the same, but it's like kind of like crowd work. And I've been going nuts without like interacting with you guys in a live setting. Reading comments is great. I love feedback uh, as long as it's not dumb cunts, obviously. But I love that. But it's, it's like not, it feels, it's hard to make that real. Obviously it is real, but it's hard for me. Your brain just isn't built for that. You know what I mean? Like reading words and then going, oh, that's a real person. It's hard for me to do that. But it's a lot easier when I say something and then fucking two seconds after you see a bunch of like uh, haha or lol or emotes or, or, re or responses or, or whatever to what you've said. So that's like cool and I'm loving that. Um, and that's really cool. Uh, now, another thing that I wanted to talk about before we do miscellaneous bit at the end here is uh, I wanted to talk about this private school uh, shenanigans that have been going on. A lot of people have been asking me about this. As a public high school vandalizer, I would like to say to those private school boys pussies, Step up your fucking game, okay? Here's what these private school fuckheads did. This is huge news in Australia. Uh, the the It's a Sydney private school. It costs $33,000 a year to send your kid to an all-boys school. Now, if there's any advice I can give to anyone with a lot of money who's uh, going to have kids soon... If you spend $33,000 a year to send your child to an all-boys or an all-girls school that has some fucking prissy uniform with a dumb fucking hat, you, here's what you're going to get at the end of it. You're not going to get a productive member of society. You're going to get a fucking rapist. And that's just science. You spend $33,000 a year to put your kid through a gendered high school. Guess what you get? You don't get a fucking lawyer. You get a date rapist with, with a dumb punchable smug face okay because you're putting them in there with a bunch of other fucking cunts who have grown up rich know in the back of their mind that if they fuck up it doesn't matter they're going to live off mummy and daddy's money and that they know at the end of the day they don't have to strive they don't have to try because mum and dad are spending literally someone's annual fucking paycheck on them to go to a school to rub shoulders with other fucking dumb cunts private school $33,000 a year you're a dumb cunt. Now, in, in America, maybe that's different. I'm talking about Australia, where our public school system, for the most part, is fucking awesome. I went to a public school, really, really great. Now, I failed that school, but I'm going to tell you right now, that was absolutely not their fault. That was actually literally a personal decision on my part. I can't be taught. I am that much of a fucking rebellious dumb cunt that if someone tells me what to do, I go, well, now you're my enemy. <laughs> oh, hey Lewis, could you uh, just do that? For oh, sorry, we just became mortal enemies. I actually can't be told what to do, and and now I must destroy you. Now you might, you know, you're looking at me like you're having a thought in your head that seems to go along the lines of that's irrational, and that seems like a personality fault of yours, Lewis. Now I'm here to tell you that that's correct, and I won't be changing it. Fuck you. Anybody else like that? There's a lot of people like that, and it's a problem. And they, they, there's two, two ways this can go. It, if you have that attitude, right, you either become very successful in some strange field that everyone told you it would never work. You know, for me, comedy. For others, rap. Uh, for others, some strange app business, right? So you either go into some strange field that, that's definitely impossible when you start it, but then it becomes true. Or you end up in prison. That, seem, that seems to be the only... This is, that very rarely ends with, oh, I'll just get a job in an office. <laughs> that does, I tried that shit. I got fired a lot and I quit even more than that. Most liberating feeling ever. Is my boss going, hey, Lewis, after lunch break, can you make sure you get this done? Me looking my boss in the eyes and going, absolutely. And then on lunch break, I leave and I just never come 
back and for three weeks I ignored phone calls. Pack up all my shit, walk the fuck out, knew what I was doing. I'm not I'm not coming back here ever again. Pack it all up, walk out the door, never to be seen again. And then fucking 18 months later, that guy goes, oh fuck. That guy who was on the news saying he wants to fuck his stepsister? I'm pretty sure I used to work with that guy. <laughs> Um, right, that's what I'm going. Right, so private school kids, uh, some shore school. What was it called? Um, what's their school? The the this article keeps calling it the shore school, but it has some fucking wanky name. I know there was one all girls private school that was like near our school. Uh, it was called Ulsh. O-L-S-H. And it was called Our Lady of Sacred Heart. But we called it Our Local Slut House. <laughs> because that's what happens when you send your child to a private school that is all girl or all boy. You get a whore or a date rapist. No in-betweens. That's it. Right? The full horror. So this so it's obviously coming to the end of the year. So kids are having muck up day. Now, me, public school kid, our muck up day was wear silly costumes, sign each other's t shirts, have a big piss up, and then on the way home, uh, vandalize some shit for fun. That was my thing, right? Pretty tame. Right, I'm sure very expensive for the people who are the victims of that vandalism. Is vandalism good? No. Is it fun? Fuck yeah. Right. So as someone who was uh, right in the vandalism and fully on board with the boys after house parties, jumping on the top of roofs, smashing windows and stealing GPSs, going to a house party, because I'm tall, ripping out the light fixtures and then blaming it on someone else, getting booted out of the fucking place. Loved it, right? As someone who was fully into that, balls deep, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the private school controversy that's been in the news, okay? Um, the full horror of Shaw School's muck-up day challenge has been revealed after the entire manifesto was leaked on social media. Okay, first problem I have with this. What's happened is these private school fucking dorks have made literally like a table with a point system of challenges and fucked up shit to do and then they've put it on social media. So right away that's going to be the lamest private school bullshit thing is to instead of just doing dumb shit for the boys some absolute fucking nerd has sat down with an excel spreadsheet open and made a nice table with a point system of challenges for muck up day hey you're a fucking dork all right that's what you got for thirty three thousand dollars i was out there actually smashing shit you're out there doing spreadsheets nerd okay that sucks and there's challenges. Uh, he, let's have a look at the challenges. Uh, Peekaboo, open eyes hookup. What are you, fucking 10? Uh, wax your armpit hair. Do you have any? Steal a school sign or flag. Boring. You would never do that shit. You're a pussy. Um, convince a restaurant to let one member wash three dishes on video i like that one that's good banter shooey a whole beer okay frenchy um win fifty dollars on the slaps on the pokies yeah cool you won't rail a cap i kind of like that one that's at least a little bit ballsy i don't recommend it but it's you know at least it's more ballsy than kissing someone with your eyes open like it's spin the bottle in year seven um, jump off Balmoral Wharf fully clothed. Lame. Um, get 10,000 views on a TikTok made the night of scav. Absolutely fucking pathetic. And I'm, I'm disappointed in this generation. Nang while ordering in Cremorne McDonald's. I like that one. That's quite funny. Nang while buying something at Mosman 7-Eleven. <laughs> That's even better. Uh, 
Scream and moan in Mosman cellars until you get kicked out. Yeah, it's kind of boring. And that's kind of it, okay? And there's different point systems. Oh, and there was also one which was just so fucking private school that made all the headlines. How private school is this, right? Spit on the homeless, 50 points. That's so fucked. I mean, could you imagine spending uh, what would be for a homeless person an amount of money that would change their life Instead of giving that 30 grand to someone who's desperately in need that would change their life and provide them housing for literally a year, you instead put your child through fucking private school and they come out the other end spitting on that cunt. The, how disrespectful is that? Well, how much is like, what, year 7, year 12? Fucking 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Can you tell I failed high school? Six years... Of high school. What's six times 30,000? That's like $180,000. So you could basically buy this kind of house who's sitting on the street, but instead you train your your child for fucking six, seven years, depending on how dumb he is, and he comes out the other end, and, and this homeless person watches you spend $180,000 on their child instead of saving their life, and their child comes out the other end, and he's like, oh, great, you've had, you know, a bunch of schooling. Maybe you've come up with an idea to help me out of this terrible situation. And then that kid comes out the other end and goes, Wah! 50 points, boys! Chuck it on TikTok! And it gets 10,000 views while you just fucking cry. Okay? So that's the, that's the boys' private school. Now, that's right, That's whatever. Those challenges are fucking lame. Ooh, jump off a bridge, film a TikTok, spit on a homeless person. Cool, right? Cool, Ted Bundy. You fucking sick cunt. You're lame, okay? Let me tell you some, uh, some less hyped up news that I saw that just fucking shits on the private school boys. Now, if now if there was anything that's like more renowned when you're a high school teacher, there let me tell you, private school boys, okay, cool. Right? Oh, they're so crazy. Why well, I don't know, I don't understand why private school boys get such a bad rap in the news for doing crazy. They never do anything. If you're a private school kid, you're a fucking pussy. You don't do anything. You, they really don't. They are pussies. Private school boys never smash shit. You always see headlines about what they're gonna do. Oh, the private school boys are gonna do this. And then they don't do anything. They get caught. They snitch on themselves. They get caught and makes a headline and nothing fucking happens. Oh, private school boys were singing sexist lyrics on a tram. Cool. Smash a window, you fucking pussy. Throw a brick through a house. They don't do shit. As a, as a public school kid that was doing petty crime, whenever I'd see these pu private school kids get in trouble for almost doing something, I would always look at them and like and think, fucking pussies. I'm out there doing that real shit. I'm not saying it's good, by the way, to make that clear. Not good. Vandalism, bad. Crime, bad. Private school kids doing fuck shit, terrible, okay? But let's be real, there's worse. Okay? You know who's really putting in the work? You know who's really a menace to society? I don't know why the fuck this isn't more well known. The real menace to society is not private school boys. It's private school girls. They are absolute fucking domestic terrorists. Have you ever seen or heard a story about a private school girl? It's always heinous. It's never like, oh, they were singing a naughty song on a tram. It's always shit like they were getting fucked by three guys on the tram. That, like, I've never heard a story about a private school girl and not gone, fuck, is she still alive? Every, when I was in high school, if whenever we heard a story about Alsh, it was always like the next level. Or Kensington. Back when it was all girls, it was there were terrorists. I remember when I first came in contact with private school girls, some of the horniest cunts I've ever met in my fucking life, and I was a 17-year-old boy. Menaces. I used to go out and smash shit after parties. I doesn't even compare to what fucking private school girls get up to. I found this article. I don't know why there's only one article about this, okay? The private school boys got in trouble for almost doing shit. Writing up a little challenge book and then doing nothing. Oh, spit on the homeless 50 points. They didn't actually fucking do it. That's clearly a joke, right? 
Have a look at what the private school girls have been up to. Same year level, same year, same country, right? This school, uh, Pimble. Pimble Ladies College, wild plans for year 12 muck-up day and scav hunt revealed, okay? Have sex in a public bathroom. Bang, okay? How's this? How's these other challenges? Group photo in underwear outside Queenswood sign. Eyebrow slit, five points per person. That's easy. They're setting the bar low and that's still kind of wild for a fucking high school, right? Whole team photo with the security guard. Go to a retailer in the city and skull a beer inside. Okay, upon reflection, these are not that crazy. I saw some fucking nuts ones. Where is it? <laughs> Fuck, I've messed this up. Here we go. Laxative in teacher's coffee. Shit your pants and do not change. Eat a goldfish. Flower on the fans. Lube instead of hand sanitizer. Propagating the coronavirus for muck-up day. Literally bioterrorism. Oh, fucking do a nang inside 7-Eleven. Cool, private school boys. Try terrorism. Private school girls. Put Vaseline on all of the doors. Tape the fattest kid in school to the flagpole. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. Look, and here's, here's a post. That's like a real post on Facebook. Looking for a place to get a live goat around Newcastle. Need it for scav. These private school girls are putting the private school boys to shame, right? They're out there going, oh, fucking do a shoey. All right, cool. Copy a Facebook video. This bitch is out here working hard, trying to get a fucking goat for some reason. Probably to have sex with it in a public bathroom for seven points. Okay? Private school boys need to lift their game. Private school girls are literally committing bioterrorism. And the boys are the problem? I don't think so. <laughs> so funny. Here are eyewitness reports of what these girls have been up to. Eyewitness reports. Students were reported smashing glass bottles and ripping people's letterboxes out. Love that. I used to do that all the time. Nothing funnier. Taking a letterbox home. Male included, right? Nothing funnier. Not good. Don't recommend it. Fuck it to laugh though. Another person claimed they saw approximately 100 year 12 students on a nearby beach drinking, sharing and carrying copious amounts of stolen property. Some students were having sexual intercourse in the picnic area. These bitches are scissoring in the park on top of stolen letterboxes while these private school boys are theorizing about naughty things they might do. Ooh, shave your armpits. Cool. Try fucking in the park at 3 p.m. Pissed off your mind off cruises while stealing mail. <laughs> oh, man. Hilarious, right? Guys, I think it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end, and then I've got uh, I've got some shit planned for the uh, for the Patreon only podcast. If you want to listen to that, uh, Patreon, just Google Lewis Spears Patreon, you'll find it. And it's it's whatever amount you give, you get the fucking extra podcast. There's no like rules, so that's up to you. <clears throat> uh, have these emails. If you want to send uh, an email to uh, the podcast, if you need some life advice, if you want an answer question, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, try to summarize it in the fucking headline so uh, I'm, I don't have to like read a novel just to find your fucking email, yeah? Uh, and I'm also running low on questions, so if you send something in, there's pretty highly likely you're going to get in. <clears throat> hey, Lou. Uh, I've been loving the extra podcast a week. It's one of the best things about Patreon uh, and my favorite benefit I get because I don't really watch the videos early. Cool. Awesome. I'm glad that there's more value for you. That's what I'm all about. Providing more value, you know, fucking good. Uh, I also loved about hearing, I loved, loved hearing about the avatar and I completely understand what you mean. Oh, this is, sorry, this is Patreon stuff. I should probably fucking save this. Whatever, guys. Uh, I completely understand. I was saying that I feel like I watched, uh, Korra, The Last Airbender 
and I liked it more than the original Avatar series because I felt like I watched half of it just on and off on TV. So I wasn't like watching it for the first time, but with Cora, I was. I think that was a Patreon podcast. Sorry. Um, uh, I know what you mean with the first Avatar season because it gets flogged the fuck out on ABC Kids. But when you get to the second season, that's when it starts getting really interesting. Okay, maybe I'll have to give it another go. Um, I had an idea for the Patreon podcast name because I don't know what to call it because Spearhead Sundays is so good. He goes, what about Mistress Mondays? Because this podcast is sort of the mi- the secret mistress of Spearhead Sundays. Don't know how good that sounds to you, but it's 1.30 and I'm baked as shit. <laughs> Lol, have a shit one. Mistress Mondays. Mm, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit sus. I feel like that's... I don't know about Mistress Mondays. There's, there's, there's some kind of name that's definitely... Out- mistress Mondays? We'll test it out. That's what I'll call it. For one episode and we'll see how it feels, but I'm open to suggestions. Perhaps. Maybe not. Let me know what you think I should call it. Because at the moment, it's just a Patreon podcast. Um, all right. Next up, uh, we've got uh, James. Tips on how to be more confident, funny, and not look intimidating. Oh, bro. Literally my field of expertise. Because I, as, as someone who struggled with confidence uh, and wanted to be funny and currently looks very intimidating, uh, I can help with this. Saw your last podcast. Good luck on the upload streak. Thank you. Still going. Um, I can't do... I struggle doing improv, being funny and accommodating, but I want to learn these for future things, for group projects, maybe jobs, and I want to be more likable. Also, girls always look at me while I'm doing group projects and say, you have a scary face or please smile. Um, I've had girls confess they like me, but I fuck up so hard because of no confidence. I don't like smiling, but I at least want to express that I'm not angry, maybe with some comedy or other things. I don't talk much, but I have a booming voice, another confidence thing. Influenced by you and Luke, I stream now, but I lack the quick-witted comedic genius. (laughs) I wouldn't go that far, but thank you. Uh, And I sound very depressed when I stream. I'm dejected that this wasn't as meticulous, and I am penitent, for I am not the most percipient nor clever writer." I assume that was satire because that's a very nice sentence. Good luck, Bluis. Fuck you. I'm not going blue. Well, I probably am. Okay. Hmm. These these are all things that I feel like I used to struggle with. I didn't get intimidating until much later because I actually didn't become really tall until I was like actually 18. I wasn't I was like tall, but I wasn't fucking huge. Um but the the intimidating thing I I did struggle with and I still struggle with it every now and then first impressions for me rarely go my way because people look at me and they go oh fuck scary um especially if I'm wearing like the leather jacket and all black and I look like me I look like a school shooter right so uh they rarely go that way so I have to kind of I understand what my first impression is when they look at me so I always know that I kind of got to flip that and dude to be honest I don't know what to tell you you have to smile that is literally the biggest thing. When I used to do comedy, when I was first starting out, people would look at me and they would see me all black. They'd see me with the fucking fascist haircut and they would assume this guy's going to say some fuck shit uh, and, and he might mean it, right? Now, they were, as soon, and then as soon as I started saying fuck shit, they're like, oh, he is doing that, so he must mean it, right? So they would almost confirm what they think about me before I have a chance to confront it and I'm telling you bro the when I always used to like kind of bomb straight away because of that first impression I would see people think it and then I would see them confirm their own bias as soon as I started and you know what changed that when I started getting on stage and the first thing I did was fucking smile and the whole time through my act I remember I, I tried, you know what, I'm just going to try smiling my entire act because I am having fun. I love stand-up, but I wouldn't really communicate that with my face, right? Because I'd be so focused on the material or the, or the delivery. I have a very ranty style of delivery. If you see me live, you know, and, and I go even harder when you see me at my shows because, you know, I have an hour. I'm performing to my audience who know me and they know my intention is to just entertain them. They know that I don't literally believe some of the fuck shit I say because they are just jokes, right? Um, 
But if I'm doing five minutes, seven minutes, even fucking ten minutes, and I don't have that time to like set and introduce myself and whatever, I just have to go into it. Often I would find myself turning off crowds. And what changed was when I would get on there and I would say to myself, all right, smile, show them you're having fun, show them that this is just a joke. And I would get up there and I would do that and it was night and day. The words are the same, the, the delivery is the same. The only thing that changed was me going... I'm having fun and this is a joke and we're all in this to laugh and people switched. And you can do that in person, but you have to smile. I, like It's literally how humans communicate. If you look at a dog and you bare your teeth, it thinks, fuck, that's scary. Same shit with humans. If you smile, they go, fuck, he's happy. Like you can't be like, oh, why do people think I'm scary? While you're not smiling, you have to figure out a way to do that. And and don't do it. Like, don't be like, you have to figure out a way to do it naturally and organically and mean it. Because you see this with girls. A lot of the time on social media, have you noticed that girls don't know how to smile in photos? They like, they like do it. They do the things with their, with their muscles to make us smile, but it's not in their eyes. And they just end up looking like this fucking scared thing. And then these girls go, oh, I look so weird when I smile. It's like, because you're not smiling. You're just like flexing your face and molding it into the shape of a smile. You're not actually like, ha ha, I'm at, you know? So you kind of need to figure out how to do that, bro. Like the, the main thing to, and also that's going to help you on all three. If you're smiling and if you can figure out a way to smile organically and naturally and confidently, that makes you more confident. That makes you look less intimidating. And you know what? When you tell a joke, they're going to know you're joking because you are smiling, right? You need to figure out a way to do that. Because I struggle with that. And it does come down to being smiley and being nice and being like, hey, and trying. And with confidence, it, I know this sounds cliche, but as someone who really struggled in like when I was 14 to like 17, actually, I only figured this out when I was like 18. High school didn't really get good for me until the last half of year 12 when I was like, oh, fuck, I get it. I struggle with this with confidence. It is literally fake it until you make it. You learn how to become confident. Some people are just cunts and they're nat- they naturally have it. Others, which is I think most people, they need to figure out how to become confident. You have to learn to like figure out how to become confident, how to you know, know what your skills are and know what your showcase is and know your, your most favorable parts of your personality. Uh, and that comes from faking it. You just fucking... I remember I used to like psych myself up before talking to like girls and shit. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to talk to her. I'm not even going to hit on her. I'm just going to hold the conversation and smile. And if I can get through that without becoming coming across, across as a weird cunt, that's a win. And I would do that shit. And, you know, you come across as a weird cunt. You, and then eventually you fucking work it out. You're young. You say here, you're doing projects and shit. You must be young. High school is practicing social socially social practicing you're you're working out how to have a personality who you are how to make friends how to talk to each other how to hit on each other it's practice so use it as that you know you have to smile bro i'm not gonna sit here and say oh yeah uh if you fucking just be if you confidently never smile people will like you no they'll think you're gonna fucking kill them you need to work out how to have positive, open body language. Um, I watched videos on this. Uh, I watched body language coach videos of like what body language means and and how to be open and and uh, and all this kind of shit. And don't take it literally because if you take it literally, you're gonna be sitting there with your fucking palms open and going like this and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you look even fucking weirder. But just like watch some body language shit. If you if you struggle. With like making friends and making eye contact, that's another thing. You got to fucking look at people. If you stare, if you're staring at the fucking ground and acting weird and not smiling, you just like, why would I want to talk to you? People don't want to talk to the kid who looks like they're not trying or looks like they don't want to talk to you. You know, I've I've tried that before. You go up and you talk to the quiet kid and they stare at the floor and they don't say much and you're like, well, fuck. I can't help you. You got to work this shit out. You, it's on you. No one. Ultimately,
Honestly, something that really helped me when I was when I had no confidence and when I struggled talking to new people, you know what really helped me is the realization that no one gives a fuck. And at first, that really got me down. I was like, oh, no one gives a fuck about me. And But that's just one side of the coin. The other side is no one gives a fuck, so I have nothing to lose. I can try things, and if it fails, they'll go, oh, that's weird. But ultimately, they don't give a fuck. They'll move on. You know, it's not like you're out there bashing people. You fumble a conversation, you come across as weird. So, they don't give a fuck. They'll go, oh, that was strange. They're, they got another problem to solve, right? So you need to put yourself out there and fucking smile and suck it up and fail and try again and you will get over it. Because if you, if, you know, if you're fucking emailing me going, oh, I don't want to smile and all this kind of shit. So, okay, cool. No one will ever like you. If you sit there and you don't smile and you lock yourself off and you have this murderous blank face, why would anyone want to talk to you? I don't want to talk to you. You look strange. Smile, bro. Figure it out. Have fun. Talk to people about what you're interested in. Share a bit about yourself. Listen to them. It's all give and take. No one, no one's going to put a massive amount of energy into pulling you out of your shell. You have to go, this is me, and I'm interested to find out who you are. Let's trade. That's all the conversation is. It's me talking, me listening. Me talking, me listening. Listen more than you talk, and you will win. Really good book I read, How to Win Friends and Influence People, written by a legendary salesman. And sales is just conversation. That's all it is. It's high level conversation. It's trading. I trade a story about me and then I listen to your story. And if I listen to enough of your stories, guess what I just earned? The right to tell you a little bit more about me. And then you go back and forth like that. And then all of a sudden you've, you've bargained up to a friendship. Now you're mates. Now, when I'm fucking sad and when I'm going through a lot, I have enough fucking friendship, relationship, conversation points to call my mate and be like, I'm very sad and offer them nothing, but that's okay because we've had this back and forth and they know that I would do it for them. That's all it is. It's back and forth. It's trading. Um, so I'm not going to give you special tips. There's no secret. You have to smile. You have to be nice. You have to open up and you have to figure it out. And you can, and you will fail, and it'll be hard, and it's going to be weird, and it's scary, but ultimately, if you don't figure it out, guess where you're going to be at the end of your life? A sad old hermit, and that will be your fault. It's a little bit different if cunts are going out of their way to be mean to you. That doesn't sound like it's the case. It sounds like people are like, hey, you should fucking smile more. You've got a fucking scary... Like, people are literally telling you, we want you to be more open and friendly and you're going oh this isn't fucking working i don't want to do this fuck that bro figure it out you can do it i believe watch some videos read some books try it out practice talk to people that are older than you watch how they move and work it the fuck out i believe in you bro all right I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to continue on doing the Patreon-only podcast. If you want to listen to that, it goes on for another bit. I'll be sitting here. Uh, it just kind of continues on. So if you want more Spearhead Sundays, uh, check out Patreon. Just Google Lewis Spears Patreon uh, and uh, chuck a few bucks in there and you get fucking four free... Well, it's not, it's not free, is it? Because you're paying for it. Whatever. Four brand new episodes uh, of Spearhead Sundays that no one else gets to listen to. They are exclusive to Patreon. You get the Discord server. You get bunch of other cool shit there's a spearhead sundays mug if you really want to fucking contribute that you get um there's a bunch of stuff and it just helps me keep going you know um with uh with covid and touring looking like it's not going to come back for a while and not even small shows here in melbourne that's how we're moving forward that's how i'm working with all of my people and that's how we're getting good shit out to you as well uh i'm going to be streaming on twitch on monday we're playing among us with all the boys and uh i'm going to be returning to uploading on the main channel thank you for your patience i was just trying to work out twitch i got that rolling now main channel videos and cooking without instructions coming this fucking week all right see you later patreon is where it continues. I hope you have a fucking shit one.